Hi, uh, we have with us Greg Kirchmerich, Technical Director, Channel and Alliances at Anapsis. Hi, Greg, welcome. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me, Anita. Tell us, Greg, are customer SAP environments under attack now? How would you describe the scenario? Well, they're definitely under attack today. They've been under attack for some time. We see this. Um, Anapsis has customers today in part because bad actors succeeded in breaching their SAP systems. Uh, one particular customer story I can tell you, I can't disclose who it is, of course. Um, they ended up having their environment breached from a non-SAP system. But when attackers get into an enterprise, what they typically do is they start to try to uh, propagate, find other systems. Uh, they, they install key loggers to collect keystrokes. They put in packet sniffers to gather all the network data and they map everything out, right? So they get a really good in, in idea of what is in the environment. And what they did is they found the SAP system and the SAP system had not been patched, not with the most recent updates. And they then took advantage of this to exploit the system, meaning that they were able to gain control without anyone knowing they were there and then proceeded to create a new fake customer, right? So they put a valid account in the system matched to their own bank account in some other place, right? Some offshore account. And then they went into a current account that had regularly monthly scheduled transactions and swapped out the valid account for the invalid account, which then diverted six figures worth of money into this account before they were finally discovered because people were asking, why have I not been paid? But there were no fingerprints inside the system for people to know that the system had been breached. It took this external uh, exposure to realize that something was amiss. And that's only one story, um, and certainly not the only one. We know that in general, there are attacks happening all the time, people breaching systems or trying to breach systems. And it's gotten to the point where the Department of Homeland Security has released multiple alerts regarding active and widespread exploitation of SAP systems. And it's worth noting that in 2020, uh, DHS only released in total 38 alerts, not SAP, but just in total 38 alerts. And you know that tells you that when DHS is re or releasing an alert, it shows you that there's a clear and active threat. And this is indeed what we're seeing. Right, absolutely. Um, now, can you tell us how attacks and the threat landscape have changed in the last few years? Yeah, that's a really good question. Thank you for asking that. So the there's really a couple different dimensions, right? So one is we're seeing more attacks in general, just the frequency is going up and the volume. So we have an Onapsis Research Labs group. Um, they are seeing through their research more signs of attacks, right? There's you know, these people specialize in looking at systems and, and patterns on the network. Uh, and they are, they're seeing just generally more signs of it. But beyond that, we have discussions with our own customers and we're hearing from them as well, right? People either coming to us uh, because they've had an issue um, or you know, existing customers saying that they're seeing signs of people probing, right? Trying to get in. Uh, so there's just more of this happening. And you know, beyond that, you also have an entire body of source code available to the public. So if you're an attacker, there are there are, everyone thinks about the people who are like, you know, computer whizzes and you know, they're they're making things in their spare time. And and there's there's definitely that kind of group out there. There are very sophisticated threat actors, but there's also a whole category of people that um, they they call them script kitties, right? You can use somebody else's source code to launch your own kind of attack. And the, the existence of script, script kitties is greatly emboldened by open source systems that have repositories of exploits available. So in other words, I can just go online uh, and download a whole bunch of code that will allow me to attack a system. And, and the, you know, there was the recent Microsoft Exchange exploit you know, that was made publicly available. There are similar things for SAP systems. And we are seeing more of these as well. There are more open source testing kits with an extensive collection of SAP attack kits. And the frequency by which these turn around, so a new exploit becomes known, or I should say a new um, vulnerability becomes known about SAP, the turnaround time for their becoming a publicly available exploit has just dramatically dropped. So you don't have to have domain knowledge to be able to take advantage of these attack vectors. Uh, you know, these just become released into the wild and you know, it's becoming an ever-growing problem for SAP customers. Right, um, 
And what are the current uh, SAP security challenges and upcoming threats? Yeah, that, so that's, that's a really interesting question. You have to remember that any of these ERP systems, SAP or otherwise, um, they have a primary focus on uptime, right? And they're usually run by very large organizations that can tell you exactly how much money they'll lose in one hour of downtime. And the people who are responsible for these systems are making sure that they're performant, uh, that they have the right features, uh, that they're generating the revenue that they need to. And the problem with security is that, you know, it happens off schedule, right? So a new exploit becomes known inside of a system. And the first thing anyone responsible for these systems has to consider is, is this something I need to address? And the problem, of course, is that if you have a Microsoft-based system, like a desktop, for example, and an exploit becomes available, right? We all just get these things pushed to our desktops, right? Same thing on the Mac, right? You know, th these changes come down. At some point, you don't have a choice. It's gonna be applied or you just can't use your system like the, the you know, Apple or Microsoft, make that clear. And then, you know, it applies the patch and the system's now safe. It doesn't work that way inside an SAP environment. Um, you have these owners who worry that, well, if I apply this patch, will the system get worse? If I do it, if I apply the patch, does the system slow down, right? That's a big concern, right? When can I apply the patch? Will I have to test the patch, right? Well, who can I have test the patch? They have other responsibilities. How many of these things have to be measured? How open am I to this? I have to research this. You put all that together and what you have is, is a system that doesn't respond quickly to known new threat vectors. That's the real problem in these systems. And you can't just turn it around and say, let's just apply everything all at once because that's gonna to lead to mayhem, right? So that's the continuous struggle that all of these people have to contend with is um, what is the lead time between when an exploit becomes known and available and when I can actually apply that to a system. And, and that gap in between is where you're, you're most vulnerable. So that's a serious concern for anyone today. And of course, when these systems were originally created, <clears throat> what happened was that people were very much focused on just creating systems, not having to worry about an external network. And today now it's different, right? Everything's connected to everything, right? And you're continuously opening up holes inside your firewall because more systems have to be connected. So not only are there more exploits and more attack vectors, but there's just also more open doors, right? The protections are literally falling down so that we can have a greater interconnected world. And this is the price that you have to pay when you want to have innovation that people can take advantage of, but it also means that security is a much greater concern. And with that, of course, there's also your, your DevOps, right? So people now have all of this custom source code and you know, these source code applications are also coded for performance and for features. Uh, and there's a whole industry out there around source code that says, all right, you know, is your source code itself vulnerable, right? Because the system can be patched, the system can have all kinds of measures to keep it safe, but then the source code itself can open up new doors and the vendor's not responsible for it, you are. And so that's another problem that comes in here. Well, we're all looking for ways to have our mobile devices with their fancy apps that can do all these nifty things. And we want our our vendor to talk to another vendor so that they can get this data and you know, use it in new and innovative ways. But all of that is usually coded in ways that don't think in terms of security. And so that is another threat vector that becomes a continuous source of contention for all of these people. Right. So what are your recommendations to organizations uh, to make sure that their landscape is well protected? Yeah, so of course, you know, BioNapsis is always a great answer for that. but. Um, you know, I, and I say that only half in jest. I mean, we are one of the very few cybersecurity companies out there that are focused on this specific domain. And even if you are just looking at your system, you have to think in terms of defense and depth, right? So if you have a firewall, is that enough? No, it never is for anything, right? You know, the firewall is just one step, right? What are the systems behind the firewall? They need to be patched. Are you measuring your system traffic, both inbound, outbound, but also cross inside your system, right? That has to be measured. And all of this telemetry really needs to be gathered and put into a system like a SIM, say for example, Splunk or Sentinel, right? These systems where you have professionals who are looking for um, you know, three standard deviations out 
uh, of abnormal activity, right? Is somebody logging in on a VPN on the other side of the world in the middle of the night to, a, to, to look at a sensitive system? Well, to get that kind of telemetry, you also need to be feeding it from the core systems where people are acting. So when I say defense in depth, you have to have a security solution that integrates with your other, your other security solutions to give you a whole picture of, am I under attack? Are my systems at risk? Right? Are there new threat vectors, their activity I need to be made aware of? 